you are locked in on this guy and it's just you and him. But there's no safety there because there's no title. There's no definition. And when there's no title, when there's no definition, there's confusion because women always lose when they try and play a man's game. And ultimately, I don't want to be a man. Why would you want to become the men that hurt you? Because I don't need to commit to you if I'm getting all the terms of a commitment. Why am I committing to something when you are allowing me the benefits of it without the commitment? Because sometimes it has nothing to do with money. Even if the woman has her own money, if she's broken inside, she's broke. Healed whole women would never deal with someone like Diddy. She's not playing Diddy, she's being played. You guys do not want love. You want romance and they are not the same. Let me just say this, the bar is in hell because of you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing very well. I have to first start off by taking accountability and actually apologize to you guys. Most of you probably won't have noticed, but those who are consistent watchers of my channel, you may have got the sense that I've been slacking a little bit. Um, to be honest with you guys, I have been trying to take the easy route. I've been wanting to live my best soft life without inconveniences, but God reminded me that I still have a purpose here on YouTube. So I apologize to you guys, my loyal subscribers, for not giving my complete 100 and 50% best on this channel. But that's going to definitely change. And I am back and I'm here to stay because there needs to be a sound voice amongst all the voices that we are hearing on this space online period. And as much as I have the luxury not to put out content or to post whenever I want to, I believe that's doing a disservice to you guys who desperately, I know because you message me every day, desperately need someone to talk to and someone to wake you guys up. And this video today is going to be a wake up call, especially to the young women, but I don't discriminate because adolescence isn't an age, it's a mindset. And a lot of us need to grow the hell so make sure you guys subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you are engaging and you are liking the content because the more that you even just, just a like, and I'm not asking you for any money, just like the video. Because if you like the video, it tells YouTube that this is a great video to watch and it puts my videos before more people, which is what we want. With the positive message that I'm about to send to you guys today. And I want you guys to know that today, I am talking to you like an older sister would talk to a good older sister would talk to their younger sister. See, I never had a younger sister. I am the younger sister. But most of the things I've figured out in life, I had to figure out by myself. And in my latter years, by the grace of God, by the wisdom and discernment of God. So what I'm about to tell you guys today is genuinely because I love you and I have your best interests at heart. So I don't want to hear no... Greenies judging us. Let people do what they want to do. If that's your attitude already, I kindly encourage you to exit this video because it's not for you. Because I really will hurt your feelings today. But those of you who have ears to hear today, hear well, okay? And there's not a lot of women out there talking to other women from a place of love and not from a place of, hey, choose me. I'm gonna tell these women about themselves so the guys can tell that I'm not like these other women and they can give me brownie points. That's actually called a pick me. And the way I can tell is because you don't care about these women. You're just judging them. You wanna seem superior to them. Boost your own ego. You don't care about women. You don't care about telling women the truth. You're telling women the truth from a place of anger. And I don't rate that because you, are you not a woman, right? Or we have men speaking to women, but you're not a woman and you don't get it. You only see what we do, you don't see why we do it. And so for me, I'm about the truth, and sometimes the truth hurts. And sometimes taking accountability hurts. And sometimes actually looking in the mirror hurts. And sometimes actually thinking like, no shit, I've allowed this, that hurts. But sometimes things have to hurt temporarily to feel good along the lines. Most of us, we don't want to feel uncomfortable in this moment. So we will sacrifice our future to enjoy our present. Even if the present is hurting you. So you don't want to leave that guy because you don't want to feel pain. But then if you don't leave the guy, you're going to feel continuous pain for years and years to come. Plus the consequences that come from you knowing what to do and refusing to do it. But guys, before we get into this video, I want to put you onto something that's helped me clean my apartment in a more efficient and easier way. So check this out and I'll be right back. So these are my cleaning supplies. And as you can see, there's a lot that goes into cleaning this 
big ass apartment. Cleaning for me is endless and it gets even more stressful when I have to sort through all of these cleaning products. Not to mention how much waste I'm actually wasting with all of these disposable plastic bottles. But I was recently introduced to Blue Land where I am saving money and space. So you get three zero waste cleaning bottles. So these are forever bottles so you only ever have to buy the bottles once. Actually four because I've got my foaming soap over here which I've been using which has been amazing. So over here we've got the pink one which is for the bathroom, then we've got the yellow one which is multi-surface and then we've got the blue one for glass and mirror. The amazing thing about this all you actually need is tablets okay. So all you would have to do is fill your bottle up up until the measurement on the bottle and then put the tablet in here. So you are saving so much money. All you have to do is rebuy the tablets. So I know what you guys are thinking but do they work? I was actually pleasantly surprised at how effective they are. I used a bathroom cleaner, which was absolutely amazing. My white sinks get dirty so quickly and it was able to clean it in no time. I then went and used my multi-purpose cleaner for my countertops. I actually started off by using the glass mirror and it actually cleaned it very, very well. It was a mistake, but it just goes to show how well these products work period. There is absolutely no ammonia, no chlorine, bleach or parabens in it. And about all of that stuff, it still does the job. And I think the favorite thing for me is they look nice and they're aesthetically pleasing and they can just slot away under my sink super fast, super easy, and I don't have to worry about having tens of hundreds of products. So if this makes sense to you and your home, all you have to do is click the link in my description box below and you'll get 20% off of your first kit. You do not want to miss this. It's not an offer that they have all the time. And I would highly recommend you guys check out the link in my description box below. Okay guys, so today I'm going to be talking about about situationships and then I'm going to talk about the young Miami and the dating situation and the interview they did a few days ago. I want to talk about situationships first because that whole young Miami and Diddy situation Diddy situation is literally just that a situationship like it's a situationship with, on steroids There's, it's a situationship with money but it's still a situationship right if he's not committed to one woman which is you and you guys haven't defined what the relationship is, you guys are in a situationship. Let's not get that twisted, okay? I know your mind may be telling you, oh, but no, I'm the, I'm better than the girls that he's dating, da 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 I'm the only one. Well, we've decided that we're only gonna talk to each other. Listen, if you're not his girl, if he's not officially made you his girl, if there's not mutuality in the relationship, you, my sister, you, my dear, you, my love, are in a situationship. And let's be clear, some people are in a situationships out of choice. So you guys feel like I have the power because I agreed to the situationship or I initiated the situationship because I don't even want to be with this guy, blah, 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 blah. And I hear you. I'm not saying that you're lying. Let's break it down. The truth of the matter, my dear loves, is that we are using situationships as a substitute for true love. And I want us to be honest with ourselves. And in our honesty, I want us to wake the hell up. You are not getting any younger. Or for some of us, it seems like we're getting more foolish for the things that we are allowing to go on. And I get it. You're single. Men out here, the good ones, very slim. You're not gonna meet them every day. They're not gonna be at the clubs. They're not gonna be at the bars. They're not gonna be the ones trying to talk to you in the street. They're not gonna be the ones on Instagram. They're not gonna be the ones on, on dating apps. I get it. Sometimes it can feel mad lonely. Do you find someone, finally, and you're attracted to them. You like them, like their vibe, they make you feel good. You guys are doing like silly little things and it feels good. Ultimately, your emotions are invested because you're getting dopamine hits. You're feeling good in the moment. You're feeling good. This person's making you feel good. You're not alone anymore. This person's taking you out. You guys are going out together and you feel like you have your person. However, there's no title. Either because he decided or you decided that you didn't want to be in a relationship. Whatever it is, there is no title. There's no agreement. It's just vibes, okay? No title, just vibes. That's what a lot of you guys are in. Just vibes. But deep down, deep, deep, deep down. Because you wouldn't be entertaining a guy that you don't really like like that. And I'm not talking about the, the, the guys that you're using, right? Or for money or for trips or whatever you're using them for. I'm talking about the guys that you've actually, you actually like. And how I know you like them is because you're not dating anybody else or you're not giving your attention to anybody else. You are locked in on this guy and it's just you and him. But there's no safety there because there's no title. There's no definition. And when there's no title, when there's no definition, there's confusion. So there's no rules. Can he talk to other girls? Should he be liking these photos? Should he call me every day? Should he do this? Should he do that? We don't know because there's no rules. 
There's no boundaries because there's no title. There's no definition. And when there's no definition, there's only confusion. So it is impossible for you as a woman to ever feel safe in that situation. And let me speak to some of you guys who you would like to be with this person, but they do not want a relationship with you. That's it, point blank period. They do not want a relationship with you. They may disguise it as, oh, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm not ready to commit. I need to get my finances in order. I need to finish school. I need to get this position at work. Or whatever excuses a guy uses for why he can't commit to you, but still wants to sleep with you, still wants to do girlfriend and boyfriend stuff, still wants you to be available to him, but I'm not ready to commit to you. To those women that are in that position, do not allow yourself to be used, right? And how are you being used? Let's say this for instance. You go to a grocery store, silly example. Let's say you have a lint roll, right? A lint roll is what takes off the dust of your clothes, right? You go into a department store, you go into a supermarket, and you pick up the lint roll. And it's like, I really don't want to pay for this. Like, I really can't, I can't really afford this at the moment. Don't really want to pay for it. I just want to use it. So you take it and you're like, you do this. And a lot of us, sometimes we go to stores, like let's say we go to a makeup counter, we go somewhere, we just start, we start using things. We have no desire to buy it, but I need it for what I need it for, right? So I'm gonna start using the lint roll and I'm using, using it, using it, using it, using it. Even at times abusing it, because I didn't pay for this. Like this is like, I'm gonna use it up, use it up, use it up, use it up. Because I didn't pay for this, I don't really care about this. I'm using it up, I'm getting all the dust off. Cleaning, 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 cleaning. Oh. This makes me feel good, makes me feel better. All right, cool, I look good now, thank you. Take the lint roll, put it back on the shelf, and you walk out. That lint roll is you. You're being used. And because you're allowing it, he's not committing to it. Because I don't need to commit to you if I'm getting all the terms of a commitment. Why am I committing to something when you are allowing me the benefits of it without the commitment. And so you say to yourself, okay, he's not going to commit to me. So let me try harder. Let me change my hair because what's that quote that says when he, when he says he wants to see other women and she starts changing her hairstyle and changing her wig or whatever. That's a real thing. When we as women feel like, okay, I want this, but what I want doesn't want me truly. He doesn't want me forever. He doesn't want me long-term. When we feel like what we want doesn't want us as women, instead of walking away, we do more. I'm not gonna convince this guy that I'm wife me too. I'm gonna convince this guy that I can do more for him than all these women out here. I'm gonna convince this guy that I'm better than all these other women that he could potentially see himself with. I'm better. I will give you the shirt off my back. I will help you with your assignments. I will help you with your work. I will go above and beyond. I will bend over backwards for your ass to show that I'm the woman for you. Or what happens is, is that you end up performing and you're performing for someone that doesn't see any value in you to begin with. If someone does not see value in you to begin with, they're never gonna see value with you, in you. If I walk up to something, I see 150 pounds on the price tag and I say, you ain't buying that, it's not worth it. That's what we do guys. We go up for something, we see it, we see a price tag, and we say to ourselves, that's not worth it. And you may have the money to pay for it, but in your mind, you've already priced the value of the thing. Nah, that's not worth it. 150 pounds, I can keep that. I can, buy, I, can, I can go down the road and buy it for 10 pounds. You've already devalued it. And that's what guys do when they meet you. Guys can evaluate within moments of meeting you. They will test you with questions. They will test you with questions when they meet you. And if you fail the test, whatever test it is in their minds, They've already put you in temporary, could be potential girlfriend, girlfriend or wife. And most of the time, you ain't getting out of that category, period. And so if a man does not see a long-term future commitment with you, such as being his wife, he already knows that. And you're gonna stay in the category in which he's categorized you as. But don't get gassed thinking he says things like, oh, my wifey when he's describing you, or, he tells you how much fun he has with you, or he tells you, I've never met a woman like you before, or he compliments you on the things that you're good at, and he seems like he's so in awe of you. If you are in that temporary or that girlfriend stage, it does not matter what he says or the compliments he gives you, you are stuck in that role. So how do you know if he sees you as wifey? What, not wifey, sorry, because wifey is even the in-between between girlfriend and wife. There's no, ain't no wifey be. I'm either wife, material, or I'm not. And how he will see that and how he will know that is how quick 
how quick he locks you down. And I'm not saying that in a narcissistic way because narcissistic men will lock you down in a heartbeat so that nobody else can have you. I'm talking about being intentional, showing his love and attention, not just with words and lip service, but with actual actions. He will show with actual actions that you are the one for me. And I want to be serious with you. Not just lip service. Oh my God, babe, you cook the best, I don't know, bolognese. You cook the best oxtail. Like, honestly, I've never met anybody like you. And for us women, because we're turned on by what we hear, it's like, oh, oh, he likes me. Oh, I'm really putting it down. Oh, babe, that was the best sex I've ever had in my life. And you're feeling yourself like, oh, I got it. He ain't gonna get nothing better. And you're feeling yourself because you're thinking he's saying, yeah. You're thinking like, okay, if I'm this and that, why would he want to lose that? Because that's not what he values. Men love sex, yes. But the value is low because you don't value what you have a lot of. A man that is desirable can get sex from there, there, there. And honestly, even if it's not desirable, a man can pay for sex. Let's be honest, that's where we're at in the world. I mean, that's where we've always been at really. But it doesn't matter how well you perform in the bedroom. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No matter how good the pum pum is, there's no value in sex anymore. So get that out of your mind. Get it out of your mind. And great sex is relative. You may feel like you're putting it down or whatever, but he got in his mind Keisha from high school, from secondary school. Like he still got Keisha in his mind. That was the best sex of his life. And you're doing all this work, swinging from the chandelier, giving it to him seven days a week. And you're thinking, this man's gonna be satisfied. It's not, there's no value in that. There's no value in that. Men don't value sex anymore because there's so much of it. What, what each man values is different from man to man. So I can't even say this is what a man values. And most times you won't even know what he values, but he'll know it when he sees it. If he's ready to settle down. I'm talking about those men that are ready to pick a wife. But most men out here, they are not ready to commit. No, they're not, they're not ready. They don't want to. Forget all this readiness. If you wanted to, you would. Because where there is a will, there is a way. And if you find someone that is amazing and that checks all of your boxes, you'd be an idiot to let that go because I'm not ready. And anyone that tells you right girl, wrong time is a bloody liar. Because if I was the right girl, it would be the right time. Deuces. And I want to let you guys know that that space between single and in a committed relationship is not situationships. Situationships are not the answer for singleness or for loneliness. And I get it. I get why people choose a situationship because it's fun. It's fun when you got, get to play with something that you don't have to commit to. It's fun when the adverts give you a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied with it. 30 days? Even the, even the things we sign up for. It's fun that we get to play on these uh, free trials. It's fun that we get to play without no commitment. It's fun that they give me 30 days guarantee money back. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna give it back and I'll be like, actually, no, I don't want it anymore. Why well, I ain't pay for it. I gave my credit card, cancel subscription. It was fun while it lasted. That's how many of you guys are in your situationships. It's fun while it lasts. But ultimately, it's never fun. It may be fun in the beginning, but when your heart gets involved, your heart does not know the difference between we're just having fun. It's not that serious. Your heart is a serious thing. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence because out of it flows every issue in life. Your heart does not play games even though your body wants to play games. Even though your mind wants to play games, your heart is fragile and you're going to get hurt. And women always get the short straw in situationships because we were not created to be in situationships. We were created to be in commitment. We were created to have security. We were created to be loved. We were created to be the apple of our man's eyes. We were created for that. We weren't created to play games. Because you may start off, well, yeah, we're just kicking it. I don't really care about this guy. I'm talking to this guy, this guy, this guy. But when you have chemistry with someone, as a woman, when you have chemistry with someone and you like that person, it's going to be very hard for you not to catch feelings for that person. Because the only reason you want to hang out with that person, the only reason why you want to date that person, go on trips with that person, it's because you guys get on. You guys get on. He don't want to commit to you. He don't want to be serious with you. And there's only so many date nights, vacations, gifts, and all those pleasantries that you do while you're in situationships. There's only so much of that before your heart starts to long for something more from that person. 
And you keep thinking that, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe in six months, maybe in four weeks he'll change his mind. Maybe in six weeks. And this is how the six weeks turns to six years. And you girls, you young girls especially, you sit back and judge women and say, How can she be in a relationship with a man for six years and no ring? That can never be me. That can never be you. The heart wants what the heart wants. The heart gonna do what the heart gonna do. Especially if you guys are this. Every time you guys do this, oxytocin is gel. You guys are gelling yourself together. So you think, oh, it's just fun. Nope. Women. Women. You're locking it in. Every time you, you guys come together, you're locking it in. For men, it's different. And it truly is. For majority of men, they can have sex without love. Sex for most men is just sex. It's not intimacy. It's just sex. And as women, we can't understand that. And for women, like, that's not fair. And so what do women do when they think things are not fair? They try and play a game. They try and, they try and act like a man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's not the answer. Because ultimately, you can never be a man. You can never act like, you, like you're not bothered. I mean, some can do it. There's, a, there's a, like a small percentage, like 2% of women that can act like a man. I don't know about you. I'll speak for myself. I can't do it. I can't play the games that men play. I can't do it. I can't sleep with someone without... Intim- I can't sleep with someone without getting attached to them. I can't. Maybe you're different. Maybe maybe you have so much trauma in your life that you've learned to attach and detach. But truly, whole women who aren't hurt from what happened to them in their childhood, what happened to them with their father, with, with their mother, with their family members, the abuse, the violation, or the just heartbreak from your past relationships. Most of us can't act like men. And I know it hurts. And I know it's frustrating. And I know it's annoying. And I know it's like double standards. Guys... Let me tell you something. Come, 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 come. Let me tell you something. Double standards are real and they're not fair. And the way that I see it is that in this world, men may have certain privileges, but it's okay. Because they may feel like they're getting away with it, but God said, vengeance is mine. They can get away with it on on earth, but one day they're going to go and meet their maker. And they're going to have to give her an account for all the women that they smashed and dashed and broke their hearts and made them feel worthless and broke them so much to the point that they don't even know what love is, that they can't even see God because of that man, that that man, those men who broke her. And one thing I know, God don't play about his daughters. Ask me how, I just know this. I know this to be sure. God does not play about his daughters. So as much as I may not be able to get revenge on that guy, God said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. Everybody will be repaid according to their work. So as much as we think that this man is getting away with it, he's not getting away with nothing, sorry. On earth, maybe. He may be able to do like a diddy and hurt these women and string them along and vengeance belongs to God. Karma, whatever you guys call it, what you sow is what you reap. So ladies, don't try, please. Please, I'm begging of you. Don't try the two can play at that game because women always lose when they try and play a man's game. And ultimately, I don't wanna be a man. I don't wanna be a wretched, ratchet, no morals, no integrity, no boundaries type of man. Why would you want to become the men that hurt you? If you're saying they're trash, but then you wanna become like them, that makes you trash too. I don't wanna play a man's game. I don't wanna be like a man. I wanna be feminine. I wanna wanna be feminine. I wanna love. I wanna be a giver. I wanna do what? my nature naturally does. But I cannot be a giver or a lover to the wrong man. And that's where my discernment has to kick in. Women, you cannot change a man. You cannot stop a man from being a complete asshole. You can't. And it's a saying, you can't stop the bird from flying over your head, but you can prevent him laying eggs or building a nest on your head. And many of you are allowing men to stop and build nests upon your head. And that's what you're responsible for. I am not blaming you for these whack-ass men out there. They take accountability for being low-value, trash men. But what do I look like allowing a low-value and trash man into my life? I'm full of analogies today. You cannot prevent someone from knocking at your door. They're gonna try. But I can prevent letting that person in, letting them sit on my couch, giving them food to eat, treating them well. I don't know this man from Adam. Why did you open the door? Why did you let them in? And you have to think about that. Why do I do the things that I do? And it's always coming from a place. If I know myself well, I know it's always coming from a place. It's either a place of insecurity, a place of inferiority, a place of loneliness, a lack of sense of self, wanting to be affirmed, feeling left out, feeling bored. All of these things come into play when you truly think about why do I let these guys in? I know they're trash. Show me all the signs. Why did I ignore the red flags? And that is a question only you can answer. And like I said, your heart doesn't know the difference between I'm just having a good time. But what your heart does know and does understand is the constant consequences 
of having a good time. And one of the big problems is, is that you, you guys are having unwanted babies in these situationships. You guys are catching STDs, STIs in these situationships. You guys are having abortions in these situationships. You guys are getting messed up ideas of what love truly means in these situationships. And ultimately you guys are getting your heart broken, broken, smashed, violated, abused in these situationships. For why? For what? For one night of pleasure? For a stupid Louis Vuitton bag? For a stupid Balenciaga bag? For a stupid Chanel bag? Are you not worth more than a Chanel bag? Is your heart not more valuable than a hundred trips to Dubai? Is your heart not more valuable than a hundred Birkin bags? Come on guys, know your value. Add tax. Add tax. Add tax. Know your value. Know the value of your heart. Know the value of your heart. You get one heart. You know people die from a broken heart? People have heart attacks from a broken heart. People die. I know people personally, older people, middle-aged women who have died from a broken heart. Died from a freaking broken heart. That's what you want. And we die in many ways, not just death. We can get depression, PTSD, fear and anxiety. I don't even want to go out because of these stupid situationships that we allowed ourselves to get in. All of a sudden you're broken, devastated, dealing with depression, dealing with fear and anxiety, dealing with these things. All because you wanted to have a good time or you wanted to feel good in the moment. Come on girls, let's do better. Because when you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. And because you wanted to play these stupid games, here, take your stupid prize. Take a stupid reward. And this is what I want to break down to you guys. And I'm going to talk about the Carisha and Diddy situation real quick. The truth of the matter, for you young women especially, and I'm not, and I, and I'm not designate, I'm not keeping it just at young women. Because like I said, mentality. You can be old and have a young mentality. You can have an immature teenage mentality. And that's what I'm learning with a lot of these, sh a lot of women. Let me not be judgmental. A lot of women, our mother's age and above, have immature, immature mindsets when it comes to love, when it comes to dating, and when it comes to relationships. And let me just break it down to you guys, and let me be real with you guys. Like, if you were being real with yourselves, you guys do not want love, you want romance, and they are not the same. Let me break it down to you. You have the cake, and then you have the icing. The cake is the substance, which is the main thing. This is the valuable thing. A real relationship is the cake, it's the substance. And the makings of a great cake, a great relationship are as follows. Genuine love, mutual respect, genuine care and concern for your well-being, loyalty and commitment, effort, generosity, reliability, reciprocity, it's going both ways, appreciation, emotional and physical support, not just financial, true genuine friendship, understanding, trust, Great communication, intimacy, which is a lot deeper than just sex, kindness, patience, peace, and safety. The list can go on, but that's the cake, that's the substance, that's what really matters. Now, scattered or sprinkled or lined on top of that cake is the icing. And this icing on top of the cake can look like these things. Date nights, vacations, gift giving, wild butt naked crazy sex, matching outfits. The butterflies in your stomach and the googly eyes. The words of affirmation and the sweet Instagram post. The couple photos. The cuddling on the sofa until you fall asleep. The forehead kisses. The paying your bills for when you don't have it. Because I'm gonna go off topic a little bit, but why as a grown adult, why do you need your bills to be paid? I understand if you're struggling for a month or so. Why as a strong, as a grown ass independent, and I independent in a good way, as in you can stand on your own two feet, as you should, as every human being should be able to. Why need a guy to pay your bills? That's a hood, I'm sorry, but that's a hood mentality. I don't know where it's come from and I don't understand it. All these things I mentioned, the date nights, the vacation, the gifts, all this kind of stuff, it's all wonderful, but it's the icing. It's the icing on the cake. It's the icing on the cake. It's on the top. It's nice. If you didn't have the icing and you still have the cake, you could still be happy. The icing is the romance. But the problem is, most of you guys, most of you ladies, you guys don't want love anymore. You guys don't want true authentic love anymore. You guys just want the icing. Give me the gifts. Give me the cute couple pictures. Give me the matching outfits. Give me the date nights. Give me the gifts. Give me the money. Give me the sex. Give me it. Give it. Give it all. You guys can keep the love because true love is too much. And the trouble with so many of you guys is you don't even want the cake. You don't want the cake. 
You just want the icing. Because mm. the icing tastes nice. I won't lie to you. The icing tastes banging. That's why when you're making a cake, you're like, <laughs> you're still tasting it. But when it comes to the cake, you don't want something that takes hard work and sacrifice and not getting your own way from time to time and learning to communicate instead of just running out or walking away. The growing together, whether that's emotionally, mentally, financially, instead of acting like a sport brat that thinks that you should have all of these things straight away. And I was talking to someone yesterday and she's in a relationship. I said, she was saying to me like, now nah, relationships are hard. And I said, sis, yes, they are hard. Because it takes a lot of work to make a relationship work. She was talking about her partner and how he doesn't get things. And she was like, oh, but my, I look at my dad. My dad just picks up things that my mum needs or wants to do so quickly. I said to her, how long have your parents been married for? She said, hmm. She started to laugh because they've been married for a long time. And you as a daughter that probably haven't been there, haven't seen it. You haven't seen the times when your mom had to teach your dad or tell your dad 10, 100,000 times, when it's my birthday, please get me something that I want. Please get me something that's useful. When you go out and you buy something, when you go to the grocery store, please pick up these items and not other items. When you go to the toilet, please put the toilet seat down. But now you as an adult, looking at your parents, oh, he just knows the thing, the right thing to do. He knows the right thing to say. He knows when I'm not good. He picks it up. But no, you that been in a relationship with your man for one year, six months, two years, three years. Oh, he should just know that. That's the problem of our generation. It's the problem of our generation. If a guy's not on point from the jump, you race to go. Like, and I'm not, and let's be clear, guys. If you follow my channel, you know there's certain things that are deal breakers. Like, if it's on, there's certain things that are deal breakers that you should never tolerate. Never, 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 never. But of these things, if you're in a relationship and there's these small things, right, that are annoying to you, but they're not deal breakers, work with the guy especially if the guy is a good guy no guy's going to be perfect no guy's going to be like russell wilson from the jump and let's talk about russell wilson's syrup because they're um, they're starting to annoy me because we've already told you guys that your couple goals we love you guys relationship and we still do but must there be a camera there every single moment what are you trying to prove to us so now I'm becoming skeptical, like, why do you have to keep on, why are you shoving it in our faces? The guy's romantic, we bloody get it. But unfortunately what's happening is we're seeing this, this romantic Russell and we're wanting that from the jump. Romantic men, honestly, untrained romantic men are a dime a dozen. No man is naturally romantic, you're gonna have to teach the man what you like, how to do something. And if he loves you and he wants to do it, he'll do it. You can tell your boyfriend, your partner, your husband, whatever, I don't like when you do this or I want you to do this. And he hears you, he may not like it, but he does it, appreciate that. Even if it's not to the standard that you want, appreciate it because it shows that he's actually willing to do something that you want him to do. It may not be in the way that you want it, but please appreciate it. Because if you appreciate a man, he'll do more. So I kind of had to just like, this disperse a couple of myths around romance and real relationships. Because the problem is, young women, women, you get your idea of what a good relationship is from people you don't know who pick and choose what to share with you, whether it's true or not. I wanna ask you a question. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel to be lied to continuously without your knowledge. How does it feel to set your expectations at the level of celebrities who are not even in your tax bracket? How does it feel to be lied to every single bloody day online with cute pictures, cute captions? This is why you guys need discernment. In this time, ladies, I know you are hopeless romantic. I know you love love. I love love too. But when people say they love love, what well, they're saying they love romance. They, lo they like the visual showing of love. They like the, the orchestrated, curated view of what love, they think love is. And it seems great. I mean, it sells movies, doesn't it? Isn't that why people are rich? They create movies. They create stories, storyboards to get you in your feelings. But how many celebrity breakups do you need? How many celebrity breakups do you need of the people that you deemed couple goals to prove to you that all that glitters, Lori Harvey, Michael B. Jordan, is not gold. How many more celebrities that you love so much have to break up before you realize that that shit that you thought was gold was actually gold plated? So I'm just gonna quickly talk about some of the things happening in situationships and I'm gonna talk about Diddy and Carisha. 
So the lack of security in a, in a situation ship will make you go crazy. It will make you go crazy. When there's no rules, when there's no regulations, when there's no commitment, you're going to go crazy. Another thing, men will waste your time in front of your face and feel no way about it. They don't care. Diddy wasted 10 years of Cassie's life, did not care. Another thing, women, we're strong. We can handle pain very well. God made us strong because he knows we had to put up with so much stuff. We had to give birth to children. We had to have our periods every single month. On top of that, work her nine to five. On top of that, have a business on the side. On top of that, look after our families. On top of that, like God made us strong and we have strong hearts. How do I know that? Men could not go through half, quarter, one tenth of what we go through and still be standing. Women, we're strong. You can handle pain. But just because you can handle pain, don't put yourself in a situation that will cause you pain, like a situation ship. Just because you can handle pain and you're strong and you overcame that last heartbreak and now you feel better because you've actually forgotten the pain of the last heartbreak. So you're not... Oh, fine. Yeah, cool. Situation. Okay. Because you've... The pain is... You've healed. But especially to those who've healed, please, please, please do not undo your healing by remaining, starting. But this is maybe maybe a mess for those who aren't in a situation yet, but you're thinking about it. Please do not undo all of the healing you've done in order to attain temporary happiness, because that's just what it is. It's temporary happiness. The other thing that I want to tell you guys, ladies, what do you really want? Know what that is and be prepared to wait for it. Waiting takes strength. It's not easy to wait for the man that is for you, that won't play games, that won't string you along, that won't have you in a five year long situation. It takes a lot of patience. I'm not telling you it's easy. I'm not telling you it's fast. I'm not telling you it's going to be fun. I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. But you've got to be honest with yourself. If what you want is to be a wife, do not settle for a situation. If what you want is to be a wife, Please don't settle for a long-term girlfriend relationship. If for what you want is a man that is a one-woman man, do not settle for being a side chick. Do not settle for being one of many. I do have other women, but she's my main chick. Do not settle for being a main chick. Settle for being the only chick. Lastly, I will say this. <sighs> Men are going to push their luck. One thing a guy is going to do is push his luck. One thing a guy is going to do is have the audacity. One thing a man's gonna do is have the audacity. He's only gonna do what you allow him to do. He's only gonna get away with what you allow him to get away with. So that's why your standards have to be rock solid. And I'm gonna talk about that probably in my next video about having how to build rock solid standards that it doesn't matter what the guy's saying in your ear, it doesn't matter how you're feeling, it doesn't matter if you're feeling lonely, you're not gonna settle for trash. So let's talk about his Diddy and Chris situation real quick. I don't know, this video is gonna be so long. I was not expecting a long video, but here we are. Diddy is not a prize. Okay, let's take it back for those who don't understand. Do I want to? I might leave a video down below that explains the whole things. I don't really care. And honestly, I could care less about talking about celebrities. Like, I don't like talking about people. I could have made my whole channel using case studies of this person and this person and this person. And I don't know if you guys want to see that because I know it will help you. But something inside me feels uncomfortable talking about celebrities, about people. And I know I'll get the views, no doubt. But I want to help you guys. So I'm only using this example to help you guys, not to nitpick, not to judge or to critique or criticize, just to help you guys see a visual representation of this, okay? Diddy is a 52 year old man who is obviously best known for being a performer, an artist, but now turned to a mogul. He does a lot of different things and he's recently got his status as a billionaire. He has been in a long form of long term relationships with women that have loved him that he just did not want to commit to. Diddy has not been married. To my knowledge, he has not been married. And so it's been speculated that he's been dating Young Miami, but people don't really know. But it's been kind of confirmed because people thought he was dating Young Miami, but then he was on vacation with Bow Wow's baby mum, Joey Travis, I think her name is. And they were kissing. So people were like, well, wasn't that Young Miami's man? But no. And then recently they kind of confirmed in the interview that they're dating or going on dates, as Diddy would call it. And another woman that Diddy's been seeing has been kind of trying to steal that spotlight and be like, and try and claim Diddy. No one can claim Diddy because Diddy does not want to be claimed. So recently they did an interview, Parisha interviewed Diddy, which I will say, before watching the interview, I was looking at the snippets and I was just pissed off and I was angry. Now, especially reading the comments, 
I was so annoyed, like annoyed with the situation. But watching it objectively, watching the interview, it was a fun interview. I could see they get along, they have great chemistry, they laugh together, they have fun, they don't take themselves too seriously. They have good chemistry and I get it. But she asked Diddy, what are we? Carisha said, I feel like you're single, but we go together. And that just shows you. So Carisha, for those who do not know, Young Miami, she's one part of the group City Girls. And she talks about, you know, scamming men, taking their money and da -da 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 -da. men ain't shit, all this kind of stuff. And so she ends up with someone like Diddy. So people give her a pass because he's a billionaire. So they feel like she's really secure. She really secured the bag with Diddy. But I'm like, you're already a millionaire. So you already got money. So why do you need Diddy? How is Diddy the prize in this situation? So in the interview, she, I don't know if she was joking or whatever, but she said, I feel like you're single, but we go together. You already see that the power dynamic in this situation ship, right? You can see that Diddy has all the power. If Diddy was to say, I only want you, Carisha, let's make this work, she would run. But she's acting like she's okay with dating someone that's dating other people because he holds all the power. And even before the interview started, she was she called him a billionaire D-I-C-K. And he was like, started laughing because we women need to stop trying to make men that have money the prize. From his track record and the lifestyle he's lived, he's lived, especially when it comes to women, is a poverty life. That's a poor life. Money aside, because some people are so poor, all they have is money. Money aside, and we can separate money from a man. Yes, we can. A man is not his money. Who is Diddy? Who is this man? Has his track record shown us that this man will be good in a relationship, committed to you? No. So how is he a prize? You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys keep putting men on pedestals that have money and all they're ever able to offer is money. Because y'all women set the bar so low. Let me just say this, the bar is in hell because of you. Because if we as women, as a collective, actually came together and raised the bloody standard and said, we don't care if you've got money. We don't care if you've got fame. We don't care if you're the most handsome man on the earth. Show me something more. Show me your character by your commitment to one woman. Show me your character by your care for one woman. We collectively came together, which I will, will never happen, but we can make a start. If we collectively came together and said, that's not enough, we want more. They're gonna have to, if they want women, even just for sex, if they want women, they're gonna have to drop their ego and work for it, not just throw money at them. And what I thought was quite interesting in the interview was he was like, I wanna take you to Mexico, do this and this and this and this. And she's like, I wanna go tomorrow. And he's like, I can't go tomorrow. But the crazy thing is that if Carisha really wants to go tomorrow, she has the money to go tomorrow. So I understand if a girl was broke, like, because sometimes it has nothing to do with money. Even if the woman has her own money, if she's broken inside, she's broke. If a woman has money, but she's broken inside, she's broke. Let me say it one more time for the women in the back. Even if a woman has money and she's broken inside, she's broke. Healed whole women would never deal with someone like Diddy. And we've got to start holding women accountable and not praising this foolishness and saying, wake up, sis, out of all the men in the world, this is your king. <laughs> this is your king. And a lot of women feel like, nah, Carisha is secure in the bag. Carisha do not need Diddy to secure the bag. And this is the thing as well. You guys think that because a man's rich, he's not stingy. There are plenty rich, stingy men. And even in the interview, she had to ask him, would you drop a bag on your woman? And he's like, yeah, sure, 100K, 250K. And the way she asked that and the way she was shocked, she was kind of surprised about his reaction. She shows me that in the months that they've been dating, he's never dropped a 100 hundred thousand on her he doesn't need to he don't need to drop a hundred k on carisha he can just take her on vacation that costs a billionaire nothing and that's enough she only needs to be around his presence and that's enough to drop pant to off nicker to drop it because it's a concept and the idea that i'm with this high value rich man like we women will get off on the fact that a guy is rich doesn't he doesn't have to spend any money on us our emotions our romanticized mind will get off on the fact that he's just a billionaire that turns us on more than if he's even spending a million on us so women are talking about yeah carisha she's secure in the bag she's playing diddy she's not playing diddy she's being played why? Because double standards are real. They're like, yes, Diddy secured a, a, a show for Carisha. That's Diddy's network. If her show does well, he gets paid. I know for being online, even doing interviews or whatever, if it's not your own show, you can forget about. You ain't getting much. I don't know if Carisha's even getting paid for this show. Is this a good look for her? Or maybe he's kind of swindled her in because you can't mix business with pleasure. And we all know that Diddy's good at that. 
not paying his artist. How do we know she's even getting a dime from this man? Yes, Teresa, yes, sis. She's secure in the bag. That's how you do them guys. Secure your future. Yo, shut up. And this is what we do, right? And I've even seen it from my small little platform. You guys will see things with your eyes and build a whole story around it. And you'll be like, yep, that's it. That's what's happening. Yep, Carisha's playing this guy. Carisha's doing this. You ain't had one conversation with Carisha. You're only seeing what they're wanting you to see. And you're building a whole story around it. Like, yep, that's what I want. Girl, bye. One thing I know about Diddy is that Diddy's a narcissist. And that he's not going to do anything that does not benefit him. So you may be thinking, yeah, da, da, da. And even like, I always read the comments in the shade room. And people are, it, it, it makes me sad how naive and stupid people are when i read the comments and i see these things and even if after this interview came out i saw the comments everybody was in support full support of carisha because ultimately women want revenge but women rarely ever get revenge unless they kill the black guy they never ever really get revenge they just get hurt you think you're passing around these guys no you're being a pass around because double standards are real and we can't get away from them unfortunately and one way to kill this double standards is to lean into your femininity, have standards, be okay being alone for a season or two, love yourself, respect yourself, have boundaries. I know it gets lonely. I know you have your needs. I know your biological clock is ticking. I know you want to have a family. I know you want a husband. I know you want kids, but you deserve better and a situationship. And I want you to know that you deserve so much more being a placeholder in a man's life. When he's finished with you or when you finish with him, two weeks later, he'll get into a new relationship. Six months later, he'll marry the girl. He saw value in her. And you wasted all your years on this stupid ass guy that was never gonna give you what you want. So my encouragement to you girls is to raise your standards, even if it makes you less attractive. Standards make women less attractive. And I'm gonna make a video on this because I noticed this. I don't know if you guys watched Love Island. Okay, if you guys watch Love Island, I know it's a UK show, but I don't, I don't actually know how many UK followers I have. So if you want me to talk about some things that I've observed from Love Island, please write in the comments and it will be my next video. Because there's a contestant on Love Island who I believe has high standards and her high standards are making men swoon to her. Not the opposite, but let me know in the comments below if you want me to talk about Love Island. I'm not gonna talk a lot, I'm not gonna do reviews or anything. I just wanna taste by case, write in the comments, Love Island and then yeah. But yeah, I think I've said that mouthful. I've said more than I've wanted to say, I guess. Um, but I think it was necessary to talk about this. And so I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys aren't too hurt. I just want you guys to wake up and know that you deserve more. And not in a sense, yeah, I deserve more. Duh, 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 duh. Like truly, honestly, sis, you deserve more. You don't take joy in being in a situationship. I know it's good for the gram. I know it looks good to like show half of his arm on Snapchat. Sis, more times when you're in a relationship, in a situation, you're blocking. Even if your husband or your future husband, your future forever partner was to come into the picture, you wouldn't be able to see him because you're entertaining Bozo the Clown and you're getting nothing from it. That's my spill. I will be back very, very soon with another video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. If you're watching this video and you're new, join the family, okay? There's going to be so much videos like this. I observe culture and I look on YouTube and I see women talking to women but they don't really care about women or talk hey, men talking to women and don't really care about women and they just want to get money from talking to, uh, to women or they want to get clout or they want to just be plain mean i'm not about that i actually don't really want to help you guys so if you guys want to rock with me make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything turn on the bell notifications and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys